What's up, fellas? I wanted to do something amazing today. I got a problem to solve, so let's see if I can figure this out. Let me tell you what we got going on here. Here. All right, fellas, so this right here is the interior design of a cast iron smelting burner that I built for some guys. And one of the things that I didn't like about the burner is that you just couldn't really power up the blower. If you wanted to get like a jet engine type effect combustion, it just wasn't possible. You turn the blower up too high and the velocity of the airstream exceeds the flame front velocity of the fuel that you're burning. So I decided to build a pre-burner cowling that works. allows us to cause oh, yeah. different fuel stream velocities. So this little box cowling that I'm building is going to do that. It's going to allow different velocity of fuel streams inside the free burner combustion chamber and that's going to be caused by the back wall. Now I made this out of a box because the first constituent of the combustor is already square. Circular would definitely be ideal but nonetheless I went ahead and bent this out on the brake to save on welds because it just makes good sense. So that's where we're at. This should hopefully cause interior combustion inside here and allow us to power up the blower to as high as we want to, as high as the blower will go, and it'll just make the jet engine more ferocious, ferocious rather than blowing out. This is what I came up with. This should solve some of the problems we observed in the initial testing. Now I understand that this is a little bit bigger than ideal, but I plan to miniaturize this also. Just want to see that it'll work. All right, so she lights right up. That's always a good sign when you can get the thing to light that easy, you're doing something. Um, right away, I'm just absolutely impressed with this thing. You might want to turn up the base to get the full effect. This thing's actually got magnitude. So definitely uh, not something I want to be doing here all the time. It's got a very hot inner cone going, just like a high power blowtorch. And you may ask, why do this? What was wrong with the air aspirated burner that you built a while back that um, just used straight air with no air augmentation? Why bother doing this? Well, let's just go back in time here for a minute. You can see this massive three megawatt air aspirated propane burner that I built here. A lot of that yellow color is coming from the Mercaptan coming out of that propane tank sitting behind the bottle there. That was a more natural looking color. You can see this is a really nice big hot flame. It's a little bit more bluer in person, but we're looking at about a 400 to 500 degree temperature difference, guys. That there is a propane vaporizer box that's actually vaporizing liquid propane. But this is a ferocious burner. It does have no blower on it. Oh, got a little bit of a propane leak there. That's what testing's all about, though. Turns out that block sealant doesn't work out too good. So here it is after running for a while, and this flame would be about 1900 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas when you have air blower augmentation or compressed air augmentation, you get about five to 600 degrees hotter in some cases. So we could be at 1900 degrees in one case, and right here, you're looking at 2500 degrees when it stays lit anyway. So you can see the difference in the color. It's just drastic. It's a completely different beast altogether. So that's why I want to add this air blower. With the lights out, you can see it does change the color a little bit. But um, I can tell you from experience, being in a in person, it's definitely a hotter flame. So you see that little red spot we got at the back of our firebox there, the pre-burner? It means we're doing okay. This pre-burner is just a little bit too big, not much. The fact that it's all glowing red hot, is uh, pretty good. That means we're in there. We're real good. So we pretty much solved the problem. We're gonna be trying this thing tomorrow on waste oil because that's what I wanna be able to do. I wanna be able to crank up the blower power to one of these types of burners. And I understand this snout's a little bit big for your average size foundry, but that's not the case, or that's not the problem right here. We can change the shape of that snout to be a rectangular box, which is what I might do. It looks to be just a hair too big. If we could reduce the size of this thing by 25%, I think we'd be perfect for this particular blower. The power of this blower is limited. 
I would imagine hooking a more powerful blower up to it might get increased performance. This is the cheapest $69 leaf blower that I could find. This is a very good substitute for these types of uh, blowers. Like if I were to buy a blower offline, it would cost three to 500 bucks to do something like this, maybe even more. So this thing's definitely pretty phenomenal. I think it's gonna do great with the waste oil. Sometimes waste oil has a little bit more of a gaseous flame to it. And that might may play to our advantage with this pre-burner combustion box being just a little bit too big. Just a touch. Not too much. The fact the whole thing's red hot says we're doing something right. So I'm not going to get bent out of shape. Um, I kind of felt it was a little bit going into it. But uh, we're going to see how it does on the other fuels. We all right, so the thing worked just fine on propane. It's showing us that the discharge is just a little bit big. Just a bit. I'd say if we took 20% off of that, it'd be like the ultimate blowtorch. However, we haven't tested this on waste oil yet, which is a little bit more of a gaseous burn. And it would like the larger discharge. So before we do any alterations, we're gonna try it on other fuels to observe the performance. Tomorrow we'll start off with waste oil.